हेलो एवरीवन वन रात्र को भाव में कैन आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू अनादर एपिसोड ऑफ कोर्ट्स टुडे ऑन लाइव लॉ वे वी अपडेट यू अबाउट ऑल द इम्पॉर्टेंट लीगल डेवलपमेंट्स दैट टुक प्लेस अक्रॉस द कंट्री टुडे We will begin with developments from the Supreme Court of India and then move on to high courts and other subordinate courts. If you like our content then please do support us by liking and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Let's begin. In a significant development the Supreme Court of India has agreed to hear the Ganwapi Masjid case tomorrow that is on Friday at 3 pm. Chief Justice of India D Y Chandrachur has agreed to constitute the bench tomorrow after an urgent mentioning of the case was made by advocate Vishnu Shankar Jain on behalf of the Hindu plaintiffs This particular petition has been filed by the Hindu parties seeking extension of the order protecting the purported shivling found inside the premises of the Ganwapi Mosque Newly sworn in Chief Justice of India Justice D Y Chandrachur today said that he has issued directions to the registrar listing for automatic listing of freshly filed cases on specified dates C J Chandrachur said this today morning when the court was hearing mentioning of cases The Supreme Court today refused to grant urgent listing of a petition seeking directions to stop stubble burning in the neighboring states to control the air pollution in the city of Delhi. Advocate Shashank Shekhar Jha mentioned this particular matter before a bench comprising CGI DY Chandrachur, Justice Hema Kohli and Justice JB Pardiwala. The CGI was of the opinion that some genuine solutions are required to be implemented to fight pollution in the national capital. In an important development the Supreme Court of India today ordered that 73 year old human rights activist Gautam Navlakha who was in custody in connection with the Bhima Koragao case to be transferred to house arrest within 48 hours on account of his prevailing medical condition the order is however interim in nature and will be reviewed after one month a bench comprising justices k m joseph and rishikesh roy noted that navlakha has no criminal antecedents and that he has been in custody since 2020 we have made a detailed video on this development the link to which has been given in the description box below please do check it out The Supreme Court of India today considered a writ petition seeking directions to quash a rule under the Assisted Reproductive Technology Regulation Act of 2021 requiring married women to obtain their husband's consent for intrauterine insemination with donor sperm. The court tagged this particular petition with another pending petition filed by an IVF specialist against the ART Act. the surrogacy regulation act of 2021 and other related rules the division bench comprising justices ajay rastogi and ct ravi kumar refused to issue notice but told the concerned advocate that is the counsel appearing on behalf of the petitioner that he was at liberty to mention it along with the pending matter The Supreme Court of India today directed the union government to file a counter affidavit in the petition preferred by Rajya Sabha MP Dr Subramanian Swami seeking national heritage status for Ram Setu within a period of 4 weeks at the very outset Dr Swami appearing in person apprised the bench comprising CGI DY Chandrachur Justice Hema Kohli and Justice JB Pardiwala that an adjournment letter had been circulated by the central government He submitted that on several prior occasions the Supreme Court had directed the union government to file the counter affidavit but the same has not been complied with till date. The Supreme Court of India today said that it would hear the application filed seeking stay of the demolition of the tomb or dargah of Afzal Khan situated in Satara Maharashtra. Advocate Mr Nizam Pasha mentioned this particular matter before a bench comprising CGI DY Chandrachur Justice Hema Kohli and Justice JB Pardiwala the council orally sought status quo direction but the CGI indicated that there would be no need for the same as the application would be taken up on the very next day the application has been filed by Haz Muhammad Afzal Khan Memorial Society Deputy Chief Minister of the Delhi government Manish Sisodia 
has filed an affidavit in the Supreme Court of India complaining of the indifferent attitude shown by senior civil servants to the elected government. Since the control over the civil servants is exercised by the union government, they are not answerable to the Delhi government and this has jeopardized the administration, the deputy CM has said. The affidavit has been filed in the petition filed by the Delhi government challenging the notifications issued by the central government regarding the control of civil servants who serve the government in the national capital. A court in the state of Uttar Pradesh's Rampur district today dismissed an application moved by the Samajwadi party leader Azam Khan seeking a stay of his conviction in the 2019 hate speech case. The court has pronounced the order today pursuant to a direction issued by the Supreme Court to decide Khan's application today itself. It may be noted that Khan had been found guilty in the 2019 hate speech case by a Rampur court last month and was awarded a three-year jail term. In this case, he had made provocative remarks against the Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh, Yogi Adityanath, and the then DM of Rampur, Mr. Singh, during the Lok Sabha elections of 2019. In this background, Khan had approached the Supreme Court, challenging the by-election of Rampur's seat, arguing that such a move was not proper when his appeal against the conviction is pending before the Concerned Sessions Court. The Bombay High Court today said that former Chief Executive of the ICICI Bank, Chanda Kocha's retrospective termination of the bank in 2019 is a prima facie valid termination while dismissing her interim application in her suit filed against the bank. A single bench of Justice Riyas Chagla observed that Kocha had not come to court with clean hands. In the interim order passed, the court also restrained Kocher from dealing with ICICI Bank's 6,90,000 shares which she had acquired through stock options between October 4th and December 11, 2018. It has also been directed that she has to disclose all her transactions while dealing with the stocks on an affidavit within a period of six weeks. The Calcutta High Court has dismissed the contempt petition moved by Suvinandu Adhikari against West Bengal Director General of Police Manoj Malviya and two other IPS officers for violating an earlier order by restricting Adhikari from going to Netai village in Jhargam district of West Bengal on January 7 this year. Justice Sabacharji Bhattacharya observed that a huge number of people had converged in the particular area at the relevant time belonging mostly to the ruling TMC party and the main opposition of the state, that is, the BJP. In view of these particular developments, the High Court was of the view that Adhikari's entry into the Netai village may have led to a riotous conflagration. Therefore, the preventive action of the concerned law enforcement authorities was necessary. The Telangana High Court has ordered suspended BJP MLA Raja Singh's release from the preventive detention. The government had ordered his preventive detention soon after he was released on bail in August in a criminal case accusing him of making derogatory remarks against Prophet Muhammad in a video posted on social media. Setting aside this particular detention order, the Division Bench of the High Court of Justice A. Abhishek Reddy and Justice Juwadi Sridevi restrained Singh from participating or holding any celebrity rallies or meeting after his release. Thank you. Keep watching Courts today on Live Law for more such updates. See you tomorrow.